Hi, my name's Doug and we're here at Couch Activity Centre. Today we're going to look at water safety. We're going to look at what gear and equipment you're going to take with you, as well as what you need to check before heading out onto the water. We're also going to have a look at what skills you might need to keep yourself safe. We're now going to have a look at some of the equipment that you're going to need. So when we head out onto the water, we're going to look at what gear we need to be wearing. The most important thing that we can take is some personal flotation. And that can be in the form of a buoyancy aid like this. Okay, this is going to help keep us afloat if we head into the water. We also have slightly different designs. And this is an impact vest, so if we're doing a high speed sport such as windsurfing, then we might want something that's going to protect us if we hit the water at speed. The next thing we're going to need is something to keep us warm. Now in summer, we have our short wetsuits. Okay, this is going to help keep our core cool warm, but it's not going to overheat us. For the winter, we've got a nice long wetsuit, nice thick neoprene, and this is gonna help keep us warm when those water temperatures are a bit chillier. If we're going out sailing, we might want something that's gonna help keep the wind off us. So we've got a couple of options. We've got a cag like this, and this will help keep the worst of the wind off, help keep us nice and warm. Or you might wear a big sailing coat like I'm wearing now. If we're going windsurfing, or we're gonna be getting a lot wetter, but we still wanna keep that wind off, we've got neoprene jackets and these are super good for those windsurfers. We also have got things that are going to help keep our, our head warm. So we've got neoprene hoods like the style that surfers wear, again really good when those water temperatures are pretty cold. We also want to keep our feet warm so we've got neoprene booties, again take them out sailing, they're going to help protect your feet when you're out hiking or protect your feet from the stones when you're walking on and off the beach. And lastly, if it's really cold, you might take some waterproof trousers. This is more if you're going out power boating or you're sailing in bigger boats. Whack these on, they'll help keep your lower half nice and warm and dry. So if you're going out windsurfing, you might need some extra gear, some specific gear. We've got our windsurf harness here, and this will help you hold down more power in the sail and go faster. You might choose to wear a helmet, such as this one, if you're going uh, kayaking around rocks or if you're taking up one of the newer sports of wing foiling or windsurf foiling, as you're above the water and the impact can be a bit harder. So a nice water sports helmet to keep you safe is an ideal choice. So let's talk about some of the gear you might want to take with you. Even for a short trip, when you're heading out onto the water, you want to take some form of communication with you. Now it could be a mobile phone, however you want to be aware that the signal is not always great when you're on the water. So a better option, is a VHF radio. Whatever you decide to take with you, it's a really good idea to have a bag to put it in to keep it nice and dry. If you're going on a slightly longer trip, you might want to take a first aid kit with you just in case you get some cuts or scrapes, you can look after yourself without needing to call for help. If you're going on a longer trip, maybe a full day paddle, then you might want to take a dry bag with some more equipment in it. So in my bag here, I've got some extra layers, I've got some food, I've got a nice hot drink, to help keep my, keep my energy levels up if I get a bit tired. So we're going to look at some of the specific kit you're going to take with you when you're out paddling. And if you're out kayaking in a closed cockpit boat, you're going to want a spray deck. This is going to help keep the water off you, keep you nice and dry, and stop your kayak from filling up. You might also take with you a tow belt. Now the key features of a tow belt is that it's got a quick release on it, so you can just pull the handle and it will come apart. Whenever we're paddling, we don't want anything attached to us that we can't quickly get off. So now we're going to talk about wind, weather, tide, and how we can make sure that we have an enjoyable time on the water. To check the weather, we want to be looking at the Met Office uh, or any other good weather app. When we're checking it, we want to be looking what's the wind doing, what, how strong is it going to be, and what direction is it coming from. We also want to be seeing what's happening. Is it going to be raining? Is it going to be sunny? Uh, so we can dress appropriately and have a great time out there. We also want to have a look at what the water's doing. And by that, I mean, what are the tides like? Now you can see behind me, we've got loads of water because uh, the tide is up. However, if we were to come here at the same time next week, we'd have no water, the tides would be gone. How do you check this? You want to find your local tide book. Now you can get these at any good channery or you can get them at our reception here at Cow Shop. So when we're going out on the water, we want to think about our location. Here at Cowshot, we're super lucky. We can get out at any wind direction uh, because we can choose where we go on the spit. Today, we've got a northeasterly wind. And so behind me, the lagoon is really sheltered. You can see how flat and calm the water is. What we're gonna do now is show you one of the other places you could launch, but it wouldn't be a good idea today because it's gonna be super choppy. 
So here we are on the other side of the spit, only 200 meters away from where we previously were. As you can see behind me, the water is a lot rougher and where it's looking really disturbed, there's quite a lot of current running underneath it. This wouldn't be an ideal place to launch. So before we head out on the water, particularly if you haven't used your equipment over the winter, we want to give it a quick check over to make sure it's safe to use. So looking over the whole kayak, we want to make sure there's no cracks or splits in it. We want to make sure that our airbags in the back are nicely inflated and that we've still got our bungs put in it. If you're in any doubt about whether your equipment is safe to use, get a professional to check it or refer back to the manufacturer's website about what you should be looking out for. So with our stand-up paddle board, we've got an inflatable board here. The first thing we need to do is make sure that it's pumped up to the correct PSI. To find that information, you want to check on the manufacturer's website or what's written on the back of the sup. Next thing we want to do is make sure that we've got our leash attached. We've got that attached to the back of the board. We've got the strap ready to go around our ankle. Because we're in flat water with no movement on it, we can get away with having a ankle strap as opposed to a quick release belt. The last thing we need to check is our paddle, make sure it's set to the correct height for us and that it's in good overall condition. So our key takeaways for being safe on the water are if you're coming to a new location, have a chat with some locals to find the best spot to launch. Check the weather and the tides before you come down. Make sure you've got the right gear for the conditions and that your equipment is good to go. And then if you're unsure, get some tuition. You can get some lessons or training with us. You can learn how to kayak, sail or windsurf. All of our lessons are available to book online. So head to our website and get yourself on there. So thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. And if you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.